All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about numbers, okay? So there are three numeric types in Python. Integer or init, so int, is a whole number, positive or negative without decimals, of unlimited length. Then we have float, or floating point number, is a number, positive or negative, containing one or more decimals. Then we have complex. Complex numbers are written with a j as the imaginary part. Then we have type conversion. You can convert from one type to another with the init, float, or complex methods. Random number, Python does not have a random function to make a random number, but Python has a built-in module called random that be can be used to make random numbers. So now let's jump over to Anaconda and let's launch our Jupyter Notebook and let's create a numbers notebook so that we can do a test here. So we'll do file, sorry, we'll do new Python 3 notebook and then we're gonna label this as 04 numbers, okay? So you can see right there, now we have numbers, okay? And, okay, so for Python numbers, we're going to talk about the integer, we're going to talk about float, and we're going to talk about complex. Now, we talked about each one of these with data types, but in a different instance, okay? So the way that we're going to be talking about it here is by function, okay? The way that I was showing you before was similar to that, but I wasn't explaining to you exactly what we were doing. And I did that on purpose so that we could cover it here and have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So first what I want you to do is I want you to comment this out and we're gonna do Python numbers. Okay, and I wanna do integer, int, then we're gonna do float, and we're gonna do complex, okay? Now, we'll do an example for each. So I'm gonna do a equals one, and then we'll do integer, hashtag integer, okay? And then b equals 3.7, okay? And that's gonna be float. And then c equals one u, okay? And this is complex, okay? And then let's run print, sorry, print A, print B, and print C. Of course, we have an invalid syntax, so let me fix that. Uh, okay, and we'll put C inside of there. Now let's run it. Delete these two for a second and let's run that. Okay. Okay, so line eight. And do you know why that is? Well, we do know because we're supposed to use J and I used a different letter. Come on, man. There we go. So now it's not going to print anything because we didn't print. So let's go back up here and where we have integer, let's print A. And then where we have float, let's print B. Okay, and then where we have complex, print C. Okay, now let's run it. And now you have one 3.7 and one J. Okay, now let's do print type and then A. Okay, and then print type and B, and then print type, and C. Okay, and let's run that. So we have one, and then integer, two, and float, and then three, and complex. Okay, so there you go. Now what I wanna talk about is more in depth about each one of these. So we're gonna type, talk about 
talk about, not type about, the type function, okay? So let's go and run an example of the type function, okay, which we did that here. We did a knit, float, and complex, okay? Let's talk about the integer. So it's a whole number, a positive or negative without decimals of unlimited length, okay? So let's use an example of this, okay? So we can get kind of a, a better understanding of some of the options with integers. So we'll do d equals 1, e equals just a bunch of random numbers here. You can put whatever you want in there, okay? And then f equals negative a bunch of numbers, okay? And then we'll print this. So we'll do print type and we'll do okay we'll do type type and then we'll do D, okay, and then I'm going to copy this because all we're going to do is change it to E and then F, and then we'll run that. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so now you can see the result. It's running class init, 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 which is integer, right? So that's exactly what we wanted to do. And so we got the result that we were looking for, okay, there. So then finally, let's talk about float. So with float, you can do um, float or floating point number is a, a number positive or negative containing one or more decimals, okay? So what we can do with that is we can do even more. So let's do that. So let's do the float or floating example here. So what we'll do is we'll do a similar thing with, that we did with the other one. So we're going to do g equals, not minus, equals 7.2, 7.34, okay? Then we'll do H and I. So remember, I'm doing this in numerical order. Okay, so we'll do H equals I equals, and then we'll add in the value. So let's do 3.0 and then negative 58.48. Okay, now let's print the type. So print type, and then we'll do G, print type. H and print type I. Okay, now let's run this and see what it does. And we should get the class of float, which we did. Okay, success. So you can see that with float or floating, which has a, is a number which is positive or negative or containing one or more decimals, you can do a lot of different variations of numbers with float, okay? It gives you a lot of flexibility. Float can also be a scientific number with an E to indicate the power of 10, okay? So let's try that example now. So, so remember, float can also be scientific, be a scientific number, numbers with E to indicate the power of 10. So let's run that example, okay? So with this, We'll do J, K, L. Okay, those are going to be the three letters that I'm using. Okay, and we'll do 37, E, 8. Okay, and then I'm going to do K equals 24, E, 9. Okay, and then L equals 
negative 85.29E120. So now let's print type and then let's do J print type K and then print type K or L. There we go. I'm getting a little type happy here, so I apologize for that. Let's run that. And there you go. So we have float float. Okay. So you can see how it's utilized here. Okay. And again, this is just different ways you can use numbers in Python. So remember that, that we're learning the basics here, but it's important to understand the different things that you can do with numbers in Python because you'll come into different examples where you need to do something different and then you can do it. And that's why they give you that option because it's unpredictable as to what exactly you need for your project. So they want to give you as much of an option as possible, right? Okay. So that's float. Okay. Now we'll talk about complex. So complex numbers are written with a J as the imaginary part. So let's run that now and learn more about that and get into the fun of doing that. So we'll do M, N, and O, not zero, O. Okay. And we're going to do equals for each. There we go. So we'll do equals and let's do seven plus three J. Okay. And then N will equal three J and O will equal negative two J. Okay. Then we'll do print type. Okay. And we'll do M print type O. Sorry, N, and then print type O. Okay, now let's run that. And we should get complex as a class for all three. And we do, okay? So these are the different varieties that you can do with complex numbers. Then we have type conversion, okay? So you can convert from one type to another with the integer, float, and complex methods. Okay, so let's look at a example of that. So what we can do is this. So we're going to comment this out first. So convert from integer to float. Okay, so we'll do p equals float and we'll do two. Okay. Now what that's going to do is take it from a whole number to a decimal number. So it'll be instead of two, it'll be 2.0. Okay. So let's do now let's convert from float to integer. And what that's going to do is whatever we type, it's going to go to a whole number. So if it's above 0.5. So here's an example. So convert from float to integer. Okay. And if we do Q equals integer, and let's do 3.6. So what is that going to equal? That's going to equal 4. And it's going to do it for us when we run the method. Okay. So when I convert from integer to complex, okay, we're going to do R equals complex S. Okay. So this is going to go from well, we're going to find out. I'm going to I'm going to leave it a mystery to you for a second. I'm going to fix this one so we're uniform across the board. And then what I want to do is I want to print each one. So we're going to print P, okay, print Q, and print R, okay? Now I'll run it. 
Okay, so you can see that it's throwing a bunch of errors. Okay, so the name S is not defined. Okay. All right, so let's give complex an X instead of S. Okay. And let's do it like this. Let's just print P first. Okay, so let's print P. Okay, so that's 2.0. So this one right here is not valid. Okay, so the name X is not defined. So we'll delete this. Okay, and let's just run these first two. Okay, for the sake of time, I'll just run these two first. Okay, and then we'll print Q. And then we'll talk about these. And then we'll go back and fix that other one. Okay, so you can see here that when we converted from integer to float, we put two and it converted it to a decimal with a decimal point. So it's from two to 2.0. And when we converted from float to integer, it took the 3.6 and it turned it into a three, okay? So there you go. Now we're going to work on how to convert convert from integer to complex. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do z equals complex and complex equals x. And then we're going to print z. And we should have cooperation now. So let's run that. And it's giving me another error here. So it's saying that, well, okay, I didn't spell complex right. I added the T in there. That's why it didn't work. Okay, so X is not defined. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's fix this bug that we're experiencing, okay? So if we do z equals complex, and we put an x, okay, what we should get is nothing because we didn't convert from a knit, okay? What you have to do is when we type in r equals, okay, complex, we're calling float. Okay, so we're going to do P. Okay, then we're going to print R. Not for R. Now when I run this, everything is groovy because we actually converted from here to here. Okay, let me fix this real quick. So that was a typo on my error, on my side. I was thinking of something else and should have been thinking about this. My apologies. So you can see that we have when we printed P, it showed float and converted it to a decimal. When we printed Q, it took the integer and took it from a decimal, 3.6, to 3. And then when we combined R, which equals complex, and we called our float, which was P, and it was 2, then it displayed 2 plus zero j okay so that's how you convert them now let's print type p okay and then print type q and print type r okay now when i run this we got all three we got a float integer and complex okay so we're dangerous on that now the last thing i want to talk about is a random number. So Python does not have a random function to make a random number, which I read about this in the in the PowerPoint. But Python has a built-in module called random that you that can be used to make random numbers. So the way to do that, and this is a lot of fun, okay? So let's comment this out. Random numbers. Okay, so let's do import random. Okay, and then we're going to do print random, sorry, random dot rand 
range and let's do one to a hundred okay and then let's run that and it's going to give me a random number within um, so it's just going to pick random numbers between one and a hundred so every time I run this it'll change the number okay so we just click on this block here that we're working on and I just hit run and it'll change it again and then run it again and you get 71 and then 83 etc okay now if you wanted to go smaller than that you could do 1 to 100 or 1 to 10 sorry and then you'd be able to see each number because you can run it 10 times and eventually you would see every number okay so we got three we have four we have two we have five we have seven we have eight, seven. So it's not going to go six, six, one, two. Okay, so it's going to take more than 10 times to see all the numbers. Okay, so there you go. So that's how you run the random method. Okay, because they don't have a random function but they have a built-in module called random sorry so it's not a it's not a method it's a module okay but it allows you to run random numbers and this is valuable if you're creating a game or anything and you're looking to create random numbers to display you could run this module to make that happen okay so that is numbers in a nutshell and also an account it's it's uh, very interesting and a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.